Hi, my name is Sarah and I wanted to share with you the reading slash language arts program that we have been using this past year in our homeschool. I have two um, school age children right now. Uh, my oldest is just finishing up first grade and my youngest is finishing up um, TK or transitional kindergarten. So the year right before kindergarten. And we have tried a few reading programs, learning to read programs so far. We've tried um, the book, Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. We've tried Hooked on Phonics and we've tried All About Reading. We are a part of a charter school, um, a homeschool supporting charter school. So my kids um, get to take elective courses through the charter school, as well as I get additional support from an educational specialist. Um, and the program that they use, and I was hesitant to use it, but um, we decided to give it a shot when the other things just were becoming too much of a fight and a struggle to get my kids to do them. Um, they use Sing, Spell, Read, Write, or Read and Write, and we call it SSRW for short. So I thought we would give it a try, and I also thought that we would start at their lowest level, the kindergarten level, um, even though I don't have a kindergartner right now, um, it's right in between my first grader and my TK daughter. Um, but I wanted to ch go with that level because I wasn't sure if there was foundation that was built in the first level that would be beneficial for us to have going up into the other levels. So we went ahead and got that. And that's what I want to show you so far. Um, I haven't seen much about people using it. And I want to say that it has so far worked well for us. My girls have um, not fought me on doing it like the other ones. And all about reading is supposed to be an amazing program and it's supposed to be multi-sensory. You're doing lots of different activities and things, but my kids got really bored with it and it was a struggle and the continual flashcards, um, the mountains of flashcards just was overwhelming for them. It was overwhelming for me. It was very time consuming on my part and because I had to do um, two different lessons, one with each girl that I was teaching to read and so it was rough with the sing, spell, read, and write, I was able to combine them, teach them both at the same time, and I feel like they have both gained good skills. They have been um, intrigued by the activities. Um, they don't, even though it is repetitive, you do do the same types of activities. They, for some reason, haven't gotten bored with them so far and have enjoyed them for the most part, and I have seen improvements in both daughters, but especially with my first grader. Although some of that could just be developmentally, she is more ready now for reading. So how much of it was the program and how much of it is just her readiness is still kind of up in the air, but I have definitely seen her grow in her reading ability since using the program. So that's a positive for it. Um, we started using it, I want to say the end of January of 2017, and it is now May of 2017. Um, and that's how long it took us to actually only complete, well, we completed a few weeks ago, complete the second half of the kindergarten level. We did not do the full kindergarten level program because I felt like the first half was kind of a taking a big step back for both of them. It was more letter sounds and um, kind of just introductory um, reading, writing this. So like doing visual discrimination on things, finding patterns, um, seeing how things were alike or different. And both of them have already done a lot of that, especially because I had both of them do Explode the Code, the pre-books, like the A, B, and C, and it does a lot of that in those books. So they both had gone through those um, books previously. And so it would have been well below what my first grader was needing. And then for my TK daughter, it was even below what she was ready for. So we just skipped um, the first half of the program for the kindergarten level altogether, which was a single book. And we jumped in at the second book and it was actually really, really good for us to start there. And even though it is, it was probably below my first grade daughter, I think it helped her with um, kind of boosting her confidence in reading um, because it came a little bit easier to her. And I think that helped a lot, especially after not really having success with the other reading programs that we had tried so far. 
So without any further ado, and before this video gets way too long, I want to show you the inside of the kindergarten level. This program is definitely set up for classroom use, although I feel like it was fairly easy to adapt it to a homeschool setting um, with one or two children. I think that it worked out well for us. Uh, so let's take a look inside. Now, because I did get this through our charter school, it is a used copy and it actually is missing some components, but I will try to let you know what those components are and show you how we kind of worked around not having them and it ended up not being that big of a deal. Okay, so as you can see, there are, these are two student workbooks, this pink one, and then there's a green one underneath, and then the teacher's manual is this um, spiral bound one underneath. These are, I believe it's six readers right over here that you go through in the second half of the program. There are some cards for a game over here, another game up here in this, in the little um, Tupperware goes with that. There is a music CD, because again, it is sing, spell, read, and write program, so you are doing songs, which I didn't think my second daughter would be all that into it. I knew my first daughter would be, but my second one, I wasn't sure how she'd receive it, and she actually was okay with it. Um, I tried not to overly do the songs, because I got a little tired of them myself. Um, over here are some of the storybooks that your kids will make throughout the second book. Um, this is their Ferris wheel. This is something that you should have received as a poster for your classroom. We did not, but one comes in every single uh, student workbook of the second workbook. Um, so we just used one of them as our um, classroom one. And then underneath it are some other manipulative um, activities we do in the program. In this envelope are the little tile cards that you use with this Ferris wheel. And then back here is this little racetrack. On the flip side, it has the um, whole alphabet with the words that you associate with each letter, and it has all the words to the alphabet song that you're singing. So there's a section of words there, then you sing through all these, and then down here is another section of the words, so it gives you the words to the song. So you could put that up in your classroom if you wanted to remind your kids. Otherwise, this side goes up in your classroom and it's a progression chart. Um, so every day that you do a lesson, you complete a lesson, you have a little race car that you're supposed to put on here and track your progress so your kids can see how you're actually progressing around the racetrack. We did not use this um, and I didn't even realize until getting ready to do this review that our school did not even give us the correct racetrack. This is for an actually a completely different level. Um, so it's a good thing I didn't want to use it because it wouldn't have worked out anyways. <laughs> okay, so let's look at, I think we'll look at uh, the student workbook first. Okay, so here's the stu two student workbooks that you will receive with the kindergarten level. All Aboard is the first one that you will work through, which is the one we did not work through, and then On Track is the second one, which we did work through. So let's go through the first one, and I'm just going to show you the inside again. I don't have any experience with it, but it's pretty basic stuff, um, like I said before, for reading readiness. So you open it up, and then it's going to have you practice writing your name. And um, there's this ABC song that you get to do with them. Again, visual discrimination, find what's wrong in the picture. This is going to be something with um, following directions. The student's supposed to follow how to color the page, and then it's something you talk about later. There's finding, again, what's wrong, cutting, putting these pictures in the correct placement on this side, and then as well as this side. So just figuring out what, where things belong, and also cutting and pasting skills, so fine motor skills, doing patterns. So it's a lot of this type of stuff in the beginning, tracing lines, and then you're gonna go into letter sounds, um, writing, again, color cutting and pasting. So it's a lot, of, a lot of that stuff for every single letter. We'll just go through it. And again, this is why I did not use this book because my both my daughters were beyond this and I just thought it would be too beneath them. But for someone just starting out, even for my, um, my three and a half year old, this is something that I will probably go through with her just at a younger age. Um, and that's all that this one really is. So it's pretty basic. There is much more to go with this though. It's not just the workbook and I will show you that in the teacher's 
um, manual in just a minute. Now for the second workbook, unfortunately I don't have everything to show you because we did rip out all of the pages and before I realized I was going to be doing a review of this for you guys, um, I had thrown away a lot of the pages because I am not, excuse me, I am not one that's going to be keeping a lot of schoolwork pages unnecessarily. So I do have some from the most recent ones that we've done to hopefully show you some of it. Um, the first few pages I didn't rip out. So each child also has kind of their own little racetrack that they're going through. So this is something that they can do themselves and mark off their own progression as they go through the program. So this, all of this was learning letters of the alphabet. And that's when they finish that first book. And or right here is when they finish the first book. And then now they're going to be doing this book. And this is them getting to where they get to start going on the racetrack. Okay, so maybe there wasn't a racetrack poster to go with this one. Maybe it was just this. I could be wrong on that then. Um, so they get to mark their own progression, but I thought there was one that looked more similar like to this that you were supposed to get included. Again, this is another copy of the same that same poster I already showed you, um, but just for each child, they have it for their own reference um, in their own book. We did not really use it. Again, just beginning, um, letters. Um, my daughter does not like to write, so she opted not to do the second half, and I wasn't about to fight her on it. A little bit of matching. There was, uh, this This is just kind of almost like a view of the last step, so it worked out fine for us. This is another song called the Short Vowel Song that you do learn and sing with the CD. Um, beginning letter sounds. Okay, and this is where it starts with the ripped out pages, so this is not what obviously comes next, but I do want to show you different types of things. So, these pages come after you read one of these little storybooks and it's a sequencing page so you're, you're reading the sentences and the picture does belong with it um, and then putting them in order how they happened in the story. Next page you have a favorite character so you draw that person that was your favorite character in the story and write their name on it. Uh, my oldest daughter enjoyed doing this. My youngest daughter would just write the name of the person. She just didn't care too much to draw and I didn't enforce it. Then they would um, do fill in the blank for the sentences with the words up here um, and the pictures there to help them. So they had a front and a back. And that was the same for every single one of those readers. They have that. Then they had other matching activities, reading the words, matching it to the correct picture. And then again, this also went with one of the readers, I believe. Um, you know, actually, no, I don't think this one actually did. Um, so again, just matching. This is vocabulary. It was um, for, you basically are going through all the short vowel um, sounds and words that go with that. And so that's the progression of the entire book. So if your child already knows short vowel sounds and words and can read those fairly well, you may not even want to do the kindergarten level. You may want to just go ahead and get into the first um, grade level or level one is probably what they call it. So they would read off the list and I would have each child individually read this to me. Um, and then ones that look like they're in jail, they're called a rule breaker because they don't sound how they look. Um, if you were to sound it out phonetically. And my kids got a kick out of that. They loved um, seeing the ones that were in jail. Again, more matching based on um, reading the sentence and matching to the correct picture. Sequencing again. She actually enjoyed doing that one. Um, so again, you can see it's a lot of the same type. Again, more reading the list um, and matching. Now, this is something that our educational specialist told us not to do was to just go through the workbook and just have your child do um, the workbook pages and not the additional activities that were in the teacher's manual and we did follow the teacher's manual so we did do a, not all but a lot of the activities that were um, listed in the teacher's manual for their lesson plans and I do think it adds a lot to the program I think just putting this workbook in front of your child would be really boring for them and um, it's just not as well-rounded of a curriculum or a program okay so here is the teacher's manual for level K. And in the beginning, it's going to have your table of contents. 
overview of what you can expect. This is ex describing um, some of the activities, kind of, and how they are, their approach on the program. Sorry, that's totally out of view. There we go. Um, talking about the different books. But, okay, yes, there is a racetrack um, poster that we should have received. Talking about the readers that I've shown you. A little letter. Okay, and then it goes over how you might want to set up your classroom. Like I said, this was designed for a classroom, but we were able to adapt it fairly easily for our own homeschool use. Um, this is recommended literature for the first book in the in this level. This is for the second book in the level. We did not really focus on this at all because I already had um, books that I was looking to be reading with the kids. Some of these books had activities to go with them, so we just kind of skipped those activities if we weren't reading that book. So it wasn't a big deal to us, but if you wanted good literature to read with your kids that went along with this curriculum, they have it here for you. All right, so this section, and you can see the tabs, is for, so this pink section is for that first book. And it's very similar in the two sections. So it just gives you, they both have an introduction, but what to expect. Okay, then every lesson um, has, let me see if I can find a better one to show you. Here we go. Okay, so it has an objective, what you're trying to learn for that, how long, they, how many days they think that it, this particular lesson should take you, and then what you're gonna do to accomplish that objective and in that amount of time. And so um, they just go through like that. And again, there's a lot more in here than in just the workbook. So you're, especially this beginning part, it'll look more like you're doing a lot more rhymes and um, uh, asking more questions. Let me see if I can see there's additional things here. Uh, taking this um, little rhyme here and then uh, substituting pictures for some of the words. So this is something you might do on your whiteboard. Um, and then grabbing things in your own home to show differences and alike. Um, so they're doing just different things like that. Again, so we did not use any of this, um, but in this section, and I have it post-it note, it went over their A to Z phonics song, um, so you could reference it and remember what, um, when you say that letter, what is it that you're also supposed to be saying with it. So O is for octopus, P is for poodles. And it's for noodles. So it's things that you might not <laughs> regularly as associate with those letters, but it goes with the song. And you'll, you'll gather that once you learn the song. And then over here as well is one of the games that we played, A to Z Sound O game. That's what um, these cards were for. It's like bingo. They come with these little markers. Um, we did not get the markers because, it, again, you set. We didn't get everything but instead we just used chocolate chips. So my girls loved playing this game because they got to eat the chocolate chips at the end of the game. So of course they love that. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next section, which is the one we actually used. Again, very similar, they have an introduction. Then every lesson has a um, objective, how long they think it should take you, and then what you need to do to accomplish that. Um, they also have poems of the week. So they want you to read the poem of the week. I think they wanted you to do it more than once throughout the week. We ended up just doing it one time a week and then they typically had questions afterwards to ask your students, ask your students, and then an activity. The activity that came after the poem of the week did not always correlate to the poem of the week. Sometimes it correlated to one of those suggested literature readings um, and if there was a reproducible that went along with it, that was in this back section back here, and they would have all your reproducibles to copy for your kids. And so we did use a number of these, um, not always, but we did. And a lot of times they were, um, again, related to that poem of the week. So that was something that was kind of fun and something different. Um, how, I actually ended up using these was I made to lesson plan. Even though they gave me a suggested time frame, I still had to chunk out what I wanted for each of the lessons, how I wanted to divide that up over the X number of days. So I ended up just doing, I have them in the back here, post-it notes because they actually did repeat every so often. So um, every, I don't know, four lessons, 
it would be the same format all over again um, with different readers or different workbook pages or different activities or poems, but it would just change. So if we were doing one of these readers, the first day we would actually sing the Ferris wheel song, which went along with your little Ferris wheel here. And you would have little, I have them in this envelope here, little tile cards and you would go through the Ferris wheel with the Ferris wheel song, or you could do it yourself um, without the song on the CD and you would go blah, 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 blah. And you go all the way around the Ferris wheel doing it like that. And then whatever the next, um, the next um, letter sounds together, you would go up and around. And so I would actually have my kids come up to the front where we had this on our wall and they would each take a turn doing that so that I could hear them making the correct letter sounds. So this would be like day one, we would do that. And then if there were any new words that were gonna be introduced into the story, um, and those are listed not only in the teacher's manual, but also typically on the first page, it's the new vocabulary words. So if there's anything unusual, especially, that they want you to go over so that the kids aren't stumped by it when they get into the reading, you go over, I would, we'd go over that then, and then we would play the A to Z Sando game with the chocolate chips. Then day two, we would actually read the reader. So let me show you a page with a reader. Okay, so here's a page with the reader. We do, would do the Ferris wheel song, the A to Z Sando song. Then the next day, we would do the reader. And with the reader, the teacher's manual has a mini version of the reader right there in the manual for you to read along with your students. So we would have, I would have each child, since we had two, instead of each of them reading the reader individually, we would just alternate who read what page. Then at the end of a certain page, it'll say after reading pages three to, through nine, you will ask your students these questions and get the answer. So again, I would alternate who would answer which question. Then we would move on to the next section of the reader and again, answer questions. And we would keep going through it until we got to the end of the reader. Now, the later readers that were quite a bit longer, I'd say, especially based on our my my girls' attention span and their willingness to do this, it could take close to an hour to get through a reader with all the questions. And that was all we would do for that day for language arts because it took that much time. Then on the third day, we would I would reread the reader to them just to keep it fresh in their minds. Um, instead of making them go through it again, I would read it to them. And then we would have these activity pages. So those ones that I showed you where you did the sequencing. Then you had your favorite character, and then you had the fill in the blanks. And so that's what we would do on the third day. Then on the fourth day, we would do our poem of the week and any activities that belong to that poem of the week. And so that's how we would get through one of these lessons in the four days. And I believe it was suggested to do it in the four days. Let me just see. Oh, it says one week. And for us, a week is four days because that's what we school. Um, so that was one of the ways that I broke it up. Um, other activities that are in here, I passed it over. Okay, right here, are these little storybook readers that look like this. So these come in your workbook, you rip them out, and then I just folded them and stapled them together, and then the child has their own little work um, storybook that they can then read. And again, I alternated, once we had, each child had one, they would alternate who read what page. And then if they wanted to, they could go back and color the pages, which my oldest daughter did on occasion and my youngest probably never did. Um, but they're pretty short and they're fun. And then you have additional worksheet activities that answer questions um, or, ans or are t completely related to those little storybooks. And you typically had two of those storybooks in um, a single lesson. So we would do one storybook one day, one storybook another day, answer the questions related to each as well as the worksheets related to each on the day that we read them. And then again, another poem of the week and an activity if you wanted to. And again, these we were hit or miss for us. Um, so you just kept going through that. And again, it was kind of form formulaic where it just repeated the same things over and over again. Um, but it had enough variety that my kids never complained about being bored or, um, getting tired of it or just really frustrated with it. I think towards the end they were a little bit, but I think that was more just because we're getting closer to the end of the school year than anything else. Um, and then at, also towards the end of this book, you're doing more of these readers back to back. 
whereas earlier in the work, uh, um, this section of the um, instruction manual, you're, it's getting divided up a little bit more by other activities. And at the end, you have a couple of the readers back to back. But it's kind of neat because then you know that you're getting towards the end. And like I said, I did see an improvement with my first grader, especially she started being able to recognize words a lot faster and say them a lot quicker, like a snap, um, as she came across them instead of having to sound every single word out, which was a huge improvement for her. So I was really happy with that. Another game that they had were with these cards and it's A to Z pick a sound. So it's kind of like um, go fish, I wanna say, if I remember correctly. We didn't play this one that much, but it came with these cards and you would have some in the middle somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm pretty certain you played it just like go, go fish. So that was another fun game that um, you could also do with your kiddos. So I think that was everything to show you inside the program. Sorry if it was a little all over the place or a little felt rushed. I was trying not to make this video too long, but I hope it gave you a good glimpse of what is inside the uh, level K for the sing, spell, and read and write program. Um, like I said, overall, I think it was a good program for us for this year. I'm looking forward to what level one is going to be like next year and how I will hopefully see improvements in both of their reading levels at that point. As far as I can say, I think I'm going to continue using it through the different levels um, up for these two kids. And then for my next two kids, I think I'm going to try it out with them as my first reading program with each of them um, as they get into the, the ages to be starting to read. So if you have any questions about the program, I would be happy to try to answer them for you um, with my limited knowledge of it thus far, having used it for the last four or five months. Um, and only half of the program. But again, I really hope it gave you an insider's view as to what you could expect to receive if you did get the program. It is a little pricey though. I don't know exactly how much it is. Um, I will try maybe to look it up, um, but it, it is a couple hundred dollars for each level. And again, we got it through our charter school, so I didn't have to shell out that much money. But it, it does seem like a good program and a lot of it is reusable. So if you have multiple kids that you want to use the program with, um, you the only thing you would really be repurchasing are those workbooks. And I don't know how much those ones cost, but I imagine that they aren't that much. So once you put the investment in with it, I feel like you get to you're going to be able to reuse it a lot um, and not have to spend too much more money on it. So again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and until my next video, I'll see you then. Bye.